When I first visit this unfinished chapel just outside Barcelona, I respond analytically as an engineer. It was only later, looking back, that I realized how deeply the building had moved me. As a sculptor, an engineer and an architect, I feel a great sympathy for the work of Gaudí, who was not only a magnificent engineer, but an audacious artist. For me, this chapel is like a sculptor you can walk into. Many people, influenced by the rationalism which has dominated architecture since the 1920s, think of Gaudí's work as an anachronism, a flyback to the Gothic. But to me, this building is in many ways very modern. In designing the chapel, Gaudi spent several years experimenting with a complex model of ropes and weights, whose downward pull was designed to mirror the distribution of forces in the projected building. Having clad the model with thin paper, Gaudi photographed it and then, inverting the photograph, refined his ideas by painting onto it, rather like the present-day artist Rauschenberg. I am fascinated by the way in which Gaudí has made the chapel's structural necessities quite explicit, while keeping an almost playful sense of improvisation and risk. By using basalt, a very robust stone, Gaudí was able to make the central pillars relatively slender. There is a powerful sensation of weight, but also, paradoxically, a strong feeling of lightness. Unlike many other 20th century buildings in which a space is subject to defined and often massive boundaries, here it's as if there were no walls at all. It is like being in a woodland clearing surrounded by a forest of columns. The extraordinary variety of textures and form contributes to the special feel of the place. Local material used adventurously and in unexpected ways.
Throughout the chapel, both inside and out, Gaudí has made the most of elements discarded by others. Those wall has been done using scrap materials, overheated bricks and slag. The bricks ha has been disposed following the structural lines creating tri triangles who are filled with slag, making a big contrast between the texture. Gaudi chose them also because both materials was purified by fire. The architecture of Gaudí can be understood as a synthesis between painting and sculpture, through the choice of the materials, and the colors and the textures of the materials. The ceramic plates, glued in different planes and surfaces, it becomes a sculptural ornament and not a pure decoration. People have tried to understand Gaudí in terms of paganism, Freemasonry, Buddhism or atheism. I think that he was indeed a man who served a religious ideal, but I believe that the god, or rather the goddess that Gaudí venerated, was architecture herself. Gaudí walked his own adventurous path alone, but I also see him as a philanthropist, a man who wished for his work to inspire others to reach forwards into the unknown. To be at Santa Coloma is to experience Gaudí's architectural obsession, an obsession that transcends the ordinary and reveals to us something of the sublime.